Hello, friends, and welcome back to Malicious Compliance Stories. Let's start our video with the story of a neighbor who learned the hard way why it's important to ensure you hire professionals for any home improvement job. But before we begin, best way to support our channel is to leave comments, like, and subscribe with the turned on bell so you don't miss the new video every single day. Here we go. Neighbor had front of house painted, splattered my car. I was beyond frustrated when I discovered my car covered in thousands of tiny paint specks after my next door neighbor had their house painted. The painter had been prepping the wall and I'd asked if I should move my car to avoid the dust and debris. He advised me to move it further down the drive between our houses where it seemed safe. So I did just that. He was happy, I was happy. It felt like the right call at the time. However, what I didn't realize was that once the painting began, a combination of wind and the roller resulted in paint specks being sprayed all over my car. I wasn't informed when the painting started, so I had no chance to move the car any further. By the time I noticed, the paint had already dried and set. Every panel, every bit of trim, even the plastic speckled with paint. I spent hours trying to remove it using every method I could think of. Washing, hot blanket, pressure washing, polishing, and even claying. While there were some improvements, I was pushing so hard on the polish that I started to worry about causing permanent damage to the finish. I knew then I needed a professional fix. The painter, apparently a friend of a friend, had been paid in cash. When I contacted him to show the damage, I took his name and address, hoping he'd provide his public liability insurance. But that was wishful thinking. The address he gave turned out to be fake, and I never received any insurance information. My neighbor who hired him initially said she could get the right address from their mutual friend, but later she refused to involve the friend. That avenue was closed, so was the possibility of claiming off her contents insurance as she'd stopped paying her premiums and wasn't covered at the time the damage occurred. Initially, my neighbor offered to pay for the repairs. I got two quotes, 500 pounds for a local garage to remove the paint with a solvent and polish it, and 12,000 pounds for the authorized dealer to do a full spec job, which involved replacing parts. But soon after, her offer was retracted and she began claiming I bore some responsibility for the damage. She insisted I hadn't moved the car far enough away, despite me following the painter's instructions and not being informed they were painting in windy conditions. The whole thing just escalated from there. She offered to pay a portion of the cost as a goodwill gesture, but to me, this wasn't about goodwill. It was about basic legal and moral responsibility. I hadn't done anything wrong, yet I was the one suffering the material loss. She, on the other hand, hired an incompetent painter, failed to check if he was insured, paid him under the table with no paper trail, neglected her own insurance, and didn't even bother ensuring my car was adequately moved before they started spraying paint. At this point, I realized my only solution was to get the work done, pay for it myself, then claim the full amount from her potentially through small claims court if necessary. Update. I decided to go ahead with the repair at the local garage for 500 pounds. While the authorized dealer's quote was much higher, I felt the local garage's work was sufficient to restore the car to its previous condition. Once I had the bill in hand, I informed my neighbor that I'd be taking her to small claims court for the amount. I filed the case, providing all the evidence I had, photos of the damage, quotes from the garages, text messages with the painter, etc. The fact that she hired an uninsured worker who damaged my property left her liable for the costs. In the end, she paid me the 500 pounds I'd spent on repairs, plus court costs. It wasn't a massive sum, but it was the principle of the thing. Lesson learned, now OP will park his car farther away when something happens in the neighborhood. And our second story. Don't like my rapping? Fine then. No one gets bows this year. My, 30-year-old female, husband, 35, had four sisters, three older and one younger, though I don't know exact ages. We don't have children, but we do have nearly 10 nieces and nephews, all ranging in ages from infant to high schooler. Since we don't have kids, we try and spoil our nibblings when we can for birthdays and Christmas while keeping things equal so no one feels left out. 
For instance, this year we spent a little over $50 a kid, and they all got two presents, except the high schooler, who we spoiled a little more since she's older. I wrap all my presents in candy cane wrapping paper if I can so that everyone knows who it's from at a glance, but the other things I use for wrapping, like bows and labels, are arbitrary. The kids are going to rip the presents open and barely look at the bows and labels, so why should I care which I use so long as the wrapping looks presentable? I also tend to buy in bulk when I buy wrapping supplies so that I don't have to buy more bows and paper every single year. Yes, this matters. Last year I was low on bows, so I bought a couple of bags from Costco when I got my paper. The Costco bows were apparently better and prettier than the ones I had already, which were from Dollar Tree. The only reason I know this is because last year I overheard two of my sister-in-laws complaining that I used the good bows on the other sister's kids and not theirs. As if my bow and label choices showed favoritism? They even gave me the cold shoulder that night after presents were opened. I was annoyed at this because of how much we spoil our nibblings. I'd understand if we spent more on one kid than another, or if one kid got more presents than another. But that's not what happened. We made sure everyone was equal and even got them gifts too. $50 gift cards, even though they didn't get us anything. I don't expect gifts from them or anything, but it just seemed incredibly ungrateful to me and a stupid thing to get upset about. Even my husband agreed that they were being ridiculous. So this year I'm being petty. I wrapped all the presents, went out of my way to use the same size labels for all the kids, and no one got bows. My husband thinks this is hilarious. I warned my mother-in-law of my pettiness and she promised to let me know if she heard anyone complain. She also thinks this is hilarious. I'm excited to see how things unfold. Or shall I say, unwrap tomorrow evening. Update, presents have not been unwrapped yet, but the aftermath is already there. I didn't expect to have an update at all, so here we go. So apparently one of my younger nephews, who might have some form of autism, was sad that he didn't get any bows. He knew they weren't my presents from the candy cane paper and asked me where my bows were. Apparently I usually give him two bows. I've literally never noticed that I do this. Like I said, stuff is arbitrary to me. And he asked why he didn't get bows this year. I played it off and told him that I forgot to buy bows till too late this year and assured him that next year he'll get five bows to make up for it. He was happy with this, but I noticed my sister-in-law's exchange looks. My mother-in-law asked what she should tell them if they say something, and I told her to explain that I didn't want anyone feeling like I was favoring anyone. Unsure if any other nieces and nephews will say anything, as not all of them arrived, so we'll see. Update 2. With presents open and dinner cooking, I bring you all the epic conclusion. For one, my mother-in-law told my sister-in-laws why no one got bows, and while they didn't say anything to me, they've had a look all day of children scolded by their mama. However, I have found the cause of all this. Well, other than old sibling rivalry causing the sister-in-laws to live vicariously through their kids, essentially, they took me not giving good bows to their kids personally. But the real cause of all this is that, apparently, for the past few years among all the kids, They've had a little contest of who gets the most bows. IDK what the winner got, but they took this very seriously according to the high schooler. Apparently last year the sister-in-laws heard the kids talking about bows and that's how the whole good and bad bow drama started. The kids were having the contest, not the adults. It also turns out that my arbitrary wrapping practices were usually the tiebreaker among them. I told the kids that next year I will roll a dice to determine who gets how many bows and that I won't forget again. All's well that ends well, and I hope you guys all have a great day. Your sisters-in-law just want to be snarky and rude, and them reading way too much into a situation based on their personal perception of bow quality is pathetic. And our last story. The neighbor claims that part of our land belonged to him. My parents recently bought a place in Wales near Bridgend. They've been hard at work fixing it up, renovating, improving the garden, and clearing the outdoor area. It's a small, humble home, but they love it. Having always lived on larger, more rural properties, they've become used to their privacy and outdoor living, so naturally they wanted to put up a fence for a little more peace in their garden. 
Before moving forward with the fence, they checked the title deeds, verified the boundaries, and consulted two lawyers just to be sure. Everything was clear as day. This land was theirs. They even informed the neighbors about their plans. But then the neighbor on the left side, let's call him Old Mate, kicked up a fuss, claiming that a small portion of the land belonged to him. Apparently, the previous owner had allowed Old Mate to install some steps down at the bottom of my parents' property. Sure, he might have paid for and built the steps, but according to the title deeds, they're still on my parents' land. My parents even offered a compromise. They'd build the fence but include a gate so Old Mate could continue to use the steps, but he wasn't having any of it. Instead, he got belligerent, telling my parents to F off every time they tried to speak to him. Now, Old Mate's about 75, and my parents are in their 60s, so it's not like this dispute's going to end in a fistfight. But things have escalated to ridiculous levels. He's taken to using a pump connected to his stagnant pond water, spraying the foul-smelling liquid directly at the fence. The kicker? My parents have their laundry line just on the other side of the fence, so every time he sprays, their clean clothes are at risk of getting soaked in this stinky water. The other day, my dad politely asked old mate to stop spraying the fence, and what does old mate do? He turns around, tells my father to F off again, and then sprays him directly in the face with that disgusting water. I saw the whole thing go down. And let me tell you, I was ready to jump in, but my dad, being the calm guy he is, just laughed it off in old mate's face. He wouldn't give him the satisfaction of a reaction. To make matters worse, Old Mate also parks his car in a way that blocks our driveway, making it nearly impossible to use. The rest of the neighbors on the road are sympathetic and tell us that this guy's always been a real jerk, antisocial, and always causing problems for everyone. Update. After the water spraying incident, my parents had enough. They went back to their lawyers who advised them to document everything and file a formal complaint for harassment. They installed security cameras recording every time Old Mate sprays the fence or blocks the driveway. The court ruled in their favor, issuing a restraining order against Old Mate. He's no longer allowed to come near their property, and the police had a friendly chat with him about blocking the driveway. If he violates any of these conditions, there are serious consequences. Old Mate may have been a tough nut to crack, but the law was on our side, and now my parents can finally live in peace. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.